After Godzilla kills the Mutos in the previous movie, mankind will once again need our atomic hero to fight against eco-terrorists and 17 titans that are scattered all over the planet. That's why today on The Summarizer, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The film is set in 2014. Godzilla is in the middle of a destroyed city and this family is looking for Andrew. After the attacks of the previous film, there were a wave of memorials and protests against the monsters and monarch. We are also told that dead animals have been appearing in the oceans, and this may be caused by the efforts to locate Godzilla, who has not been seen for five years. And also it's believed that since 2014, they found more monsters. In this movie, we will follow the story of Eleven, who no longer has powers as in Stranger Things and is now called Madison. This little girl lives with her mother, Emma Russell. Her father lives far away, and in the events of 2014, their son died. We also found out that they were building something and that they finally think it's going to work. After some strange earthquakes, Emma is called to the containment zone in what appears to be another secret monarch location in the middle of a jungle in China. Once there, Emma asks what happened, but none of the scientists know. Something was sleeping like a baby until an hour ago when radiation levels jumped. They start to hear some pulsations and a giant creature seems to be ready to be born. Although knowing what happened in the previous movie, they don't seem too worried. In fact, they are kind of happy to see what looks like a giant worm being born. Its name is Titanus Mosura, or as they like to call it, Mothra. To stop it, they activate a containment system, which looks pretty shitty and works like crap. The whole network is going insane, and they think someone else is doing this. The containment team starts shooting at it. This monster gets scared and starts throwing spider webs at them. Unable to control the creature, they are going to eliminate it, but first the mother wants to try something else. She approaches the thing with a briefcase, which has a strange computer, manages to find a strange frequency, and calms it down. Everything seemed to be fine, until a bunch of bald-headed terrorists come in and kill everyone, and the camera zooms in on this machine, so I guess they want to steal it. In another scene, this guy explains that the return of super species provide an essential balance, and when some are a threat, Monarch was the one who decides who will save us. There is also Dr. Serizawa, who is still in love with the Titans, and says they should all coexist. But they receive news and must leave the Senate. Now in Colorado, Eleven's father is photographing wolves when this monarch ship appears. They tell him that Emma and Madison were taken and explain that the computer they stole is called the Orca and it can replicate the biosonar that the Titans use to communicate. And now to find Emma and Madison, they have to find the Orca. Apparently, Emma built the Orca so she can control the Titans because now there are 17 of these creatures. After the trip, they arrive to a new facility to track and study Godzilla in its own territory. Here we discover that the person who kidnapped Emma and Madison is an eco-terrorist named Alan Johan, and that Mothra is just a larva, and after it cocoons, it's going to be something bigger. Those terrorists go to Antarctica and start killing everyone. They enter Monarch's place, where we see Monster Zero frozen, a giant three-headed monster hibernating. These people start breaking the ice, and Emma uses this device to communicate with the frozen creature. Meanwhile, on the good guy's place, more tremors appear. What seems to be Godzilla, never been so close before. It is getting closer, and apparently it's pissed off. Though they hold fire, and his heart rate is slowing, so they open the shields to show him they are not a threat. <laughs> This guy says that when an animal leaves its hunting area, it is because something is threatening it, and it is looking for something that could be the orca. They make a curse projection and find out Godzilla is going to Antarctica. Meanwhile, in Antarctica, the good guys get into some halls, but are ambushed. Mark meets his daughter, but she doesn't want to go with him, and prefers to stay with her mother and the assassins. After that, Emma says sorry. The ice explodes and the bad guys escape with the two hostages. Oh, and yes, she also wakes up the monster with the orca. At that moment, an impressive three-headed creature appears and starts attacking these guys, oh, shit. and they all start running back to the Osprey. The monster shoots like a magnetic attack and stops the ship, but Emma now uses the orca to stop it so his ex can escape. At that moment, they start to hear something approaching from under the ice, and Godzilla appears. The titans start fighting, and they throw the osprey to a cliff. They all manage to escape, but while the monsters are still fighting, Ghidorah eats Dr. Graham, who until now had done nothing in the whole movie. 
Finally, some planes appear and start shooting at the Titans, and they both escape. The next day, everyone is still trying to track down the monsters, but they still don't understand why Emma betrayed them. Now they discover that Godzilla is following the same path as Emma's Osprey, and they head to the island of Mara in Mexico. But that's when they get a call from Dr. Russell, who is with Madison. During the call, we discover that she is also an eco-terrorist. She explains that reeling the beast is the only way to save the world. She says that they must face the truth. Humans must no longer be the dominant species and the titans are going to restore the balance. We are the infection. After that, Mark is desperate. Imagine, his wife is an eco-terrorist and on top of that she has kidnapped his daughter. You are out of your goddamn mind! Emma recommends they hide in some bunkers and she ends the transmission. That bitch! On Mara Island, they are going to activate the Orca so the Titan from there appears. Madison tells her mother to at least give the people time to escape to the refugees, but her mother doesn't care and activates the Orca. And hold on to your chair because it's coming. Something comes out of the volcano, lava starts to appear everywhere, and a giant bird named Rodin appears. Rodin, the fire demon. It's comforting. In the meantime, they try to move the bird away from the city to where the monster Zero is, but in the try, it kills all the squad of pilots. Just when it was about to reach the ship, the Zero monster appears and grapples with Rodin, but what looks like it's going to be an epic fight ends very quickly and Rodin sinks. After the failed fight, the Admiral asks them to move away. They developed a prototype of an oxygen destroyer, designed to exterminate all lives within two miles ratio. In the meantime, we are shown how they save some children, but the important thing is that the Monster Zero is going to attack them, and Godzilla appears. The two titans fight for a while, and the Osprey moves away. During the fight, Godzilla rips off a head, but at that moment the oxygen bomb explodes. They kill all the animals and fish, but Monster Zero escapes. Apparently, Godzilla's vitals are fading, radiation levels are plummeting, and it finally dies. Sarazawa is really pissed off. Imagine, they killed Godzilla, the bad monster is alive, and on top of that, the head that Godzilla took off grew back. Meanwhile, in the rest of the secret places of Monarch, the rest of the Titans start to wake up. The eco-terrorists thought they would gradually wake them up one at a time, but Monster Zero is now the king of the monsters and has just woken them all up together. Meanwhile, in another Monarch place, a giant butterfly appears, which is the larva from the beginning, and seems to be good. Now, Dr. Ling tells us about a legend of a giant dragon that fell from the stars. Supposedly, the Monster Zero is an alien. It's not part of the natural order, and should not be there. It's a false king. This explains why he can create giant storms, why he was not killed by the oxygen bomb, and why his head has grown back. What is not explained is how he got to this planet. It is assumed that on its planet are all hydras? They created a ship and sent it like an astronaut? If there are many of them, won't they send more? What we do know is its real name. They called him Guidora. Guidora. Ghidorah. Meanwhile, the army tells us that now, in all the continents, the Titans are destroying everything. Dr. Ling and Mark explains that they are moving like a pack. They are hunting, responding directly to the Alpha Ghidorah. Mark goes to look for his daughter, but as he is about to leave, he begins to hear whale-like noises, approaches the edge of the platform, and Mothra appears. Apparently, there is only one monster that can understand her. Godzilla. And now, due to something I didn't understand, they now know that Godzilla is alive. But the signal they hear from Godzilla is very weak, and they can help him by nuking him. So they head out in a submarine, go into like a vortex, everything's a mess, and they magically appear 600 miles away from where they were before. And this bespectacled guy explains us that the vortex was a tunnel into the hollowed earth, and there are like subterranean stuff to the planet or something. Meanwhile, Madison steals some supplies and the orca from the eco terror and escapes, goes to a stadium, connects the orca, and the titans begin to calm down. Now they discover a city where Godzilla had been an ancient god, and then they see that Godzilla is feeding on radiation to heal himself. But this process could take years, so they're going to have to launch the radioactive missile at him. But the problem is that the weapon system was damaged during the crash, so the only option is to carry the warhead and activate it by hand, but that would mean the death of whoever activates it. So with no other applicants, Dr. Serizawa volunteers. He says goodbye to everyone, arrives at Godzilla's side, activates the bomb, and says goodbye to his friend. Minutes later on the surface, we see how Godzilla is more alive and with more powers and lights than ever. I guess he now realizes that 
that although they killed him, they revived him, so he forgives them and returns to the sea. Meanwhile, Godzilla, Ghidorah, the eco-terrorists, and the good guys make their way to where Madison and the Orca are. Unlucky for Madison, the first to arrive is Ghidorah, and it starts to destroy the whole stadium. But Maddie manages to grab the Orca and escapes. But for some reason, she throws the Orca at Ghidorah, and when she prepares to die, our hero appears, with the whole army escorting him. Godzilla begins to fight with the three-headed titan. Apparently it's too radioactive, and in 12 minutes it will explode like an atomic bomb. So they must find the Orca, save Madison, and get the hell out of there. They find the Orca, and while the two titans continue to fight, the giant butterfly that throws spider webs appears. But minutes later, the firebird that we all thought had drowned an hour ago also appears. After Ghidorah has a few lightning bolts in the air, and destroys all the planes, the butterfly finally manages to kill the firebird. Mark and the soldiers get into Emma's car, and find Madison in her own house. But let's get back to what really matters, the fights between giant monsters. Ghidorah is about to kill Godzilla, throws our hero into the air, and it seems that finally Godzilla dies. But Mothra appears to help him. It ends up dying, but makes some blue dust fall on top of Godzilla, which gives him a little more power. While Ghidorah is about to kill Godzilla, Mark and Emma fix the Orca, but it still needs to be activated. To do this, Emma must stay, and for some reason I didn't understand, Ghidorah leaves Godzilla and goes after Emma and the Orca. Emma gets into a car, tries to escape, but Ghidorah manages to catch her. At that moment, Godzilla appears, all like on fire, about to explode. <laughs> We also assume that Emma died in the explosion, but we really don't care. At that moment, the rest of the Titans appear and recognize Godzilla as the new king. At the end, we are told that the Titans are returning to their natural environments, and different rainforests are blooming in weird places, and everything seems to return to its balance. We are also told that seismic disturbances were reported on Skull Island, new Titans drawn there, and Monarch boosts forces around Skull Island, which leaves us waiting for Godzilla vs. Kong. Finally, in the post credit scene, they show the eco-terrorist goes to buy the head of Ghidorah that Godzilla took from him in the middle of the movie. We'll take it. That was a summary of Godzilla King of the Monsters. Comment which series or movie you'd like me to summarize for future videos. See you later. Go to work. Okay. Bye.